Welcome to a new episode from English Plus Podcast. Today's episode is going to be about discussions and we will discuss something that is important to all of us. We will talk about jobs. We will talk about what is work in general, which jobs are the easiest, the most difficult, etc. We will talk a little about dirty jobs and we will talk about honesty at work. So without further ado, let's start talking about the very first thing we want to focus on today and that is what is work. Now, Ben and I are going to discuss things together, but please consider yourself with us and try to discuss things. Try to pause the episode, answer the questions on your own, try to kind of interact with us. And if you would like to interact with us on our website or on our social media, of course, you're more than welcome to discuss the subjects we're talking about in the discussions episode. So, Ben, let's start with the very first question. What is work? If you want to think about it, apart from school or your job, What else do you consider to be work? Well, if you think about it, every day around you is work. The only time when you're not working is the time when you're not doing anything, when you're just sitting back, relaxing or doing something, or of course, just doing something that has no real purpose except for your own entertainment. So would you even call hobbies work? No, no, not exactly. Uh, hobbies, if you're just doing them for entertainment, of course, they're just entertainment. That's not work. But if you think about the things that you do on the side, maybe they're not that serious, but that might lead you somewhere. These might be things you're dreaming of and you want to achieve in your life. So why not, if you get the chance, to turn these into real work or real jobs? I mean, the idea of a job is kind of standard or conventional. Everybody thinks about work. It's this thing you have to do to get money. And it is right, of course. This is the thing you have to do to get money. But it doesn't have to be this kind of love-hate relationship. You either love your work or you hate your work. I mean, your work is part of your life. So you can't hate parts of your life and love other parts. I mean, it's your life. You're married to it for better or for worse. Yeah, maybe you're right. You know, sometimes it's not just the job that we do that we get money from. Maybe some other things we do on the side can be considered work as well, even if sometimes we do these things for entertainment. I mean, some people like to build stuff, so that can be work, of course. And here we're not talking about the dictionary definition, of course. We're just talking about the concept. What is the concept of work or jobs in the minds of people? Now, I'm going to give you a couple of I'm not going to call them jobs unless you think they are jobs. Do you really think that a housewife is a job? No, it's it's not exactly per se a job, of course, because you, you don't usually get paid to be a housewife. But it is a very important job that you have to do. I mean, you if you think about the pressure that comes with being a housewife, that most of us don't even face at work, don't even face half of this pressure at work. So it's difficult, but at the same time, Hey, let me talk about something because some people are going to be a little bit sensitive about, you know, just being a housewife. And this is a kind of an old idea, you know, just the woman has to stay. Nobody has to stay at home. But sometimes it's the decision of one spouse, whether that is the woman or the man, to stay at home while the other one work and earn money for the family. And it's always about, you know, just when you do this, because you really want to do this and you think that's the best thing for your family. So it is definitely more important than a real job. Maybe it's not a real job in the sense that you get paid to be a housewife, but it is more important than a job. Okay, so what about a monarch? Well, I don't think that's a job at all. You know, just to, just because you were born into a family doesn't mean that you have the right to rule and you have the right to be superior to other people. We should get past those ideas, you know, just the bloodline and the birthright and I was chosen by God. I mean, all these ideas are kind of antiquated. But yeah, some people around the world, they still believe in them. That is called tradition. And, and we may have to respect the traditions of some countries. But if you want to think about a monarch as a job, you have to do a good job. The job of a monarch is a big responsibility, especially if you hold the absolute power. I mean, in some countries, yes, we have monarchy, but they don't really have any kind of power except for ceremonies and other things. And the real power is usually with the government. But in some places, no, the monarch is the absolute ruler. And here it is a very important job because you have the responsibility of all these people. It's just like being a president. It's not that different. I mean, in the 21st century, 
we cannot just uh, rule people any way we like and we say that it's my birthright and God chose me or whatever you want to say. You have to be a good ruler. You have to be a good leader. Yeah, maybe some people prefer democracy, prefer a republic, but I wouldn't have a problem with a just, a good monarch if this person is a good leader, a good ruler, a fair person, not a dictator or anything. You know, sometimes we elect people and they just turn out to be dictators. So enough about what is work and what is a job. Let's talk about, let's compare actually between jobs. If you want to think about these four jobs, which do you consider the easiest? Babysitter? A dentist, a footballer, or a teacher? Well, I think probably the babysitter. I mean, I know there's a responsibility, obviously, of looking after somebody else's baby. But I think overall, probably you, you'd you like children anyway, if you want to be a babysitter. So you would actually enjoy doing the job, right? And it wouldn't be really hard when you enjoy the job. And that can go for any other job as well. I mean, any job is very easy if you love it or if you like it. But if you don't like the job, no matter what kind of job we're talking about, it's going to be very difficult. And every aspect of the job or every detail in the job is going to be very difficult for you to achieve or to do. But, you know, if I had to choose between these four, babysitter, dentist, footballer or teacher, I would say the easiest would be uh, the, the babysitter. Now, let me ask you a question. What about the most boring job out of car park attendant, an assembly line worker, a shepherd or a window cleaner? What do you think is the most boring job? I think the most boring job would have to be an assembly line worker because you're looking and doing. I mean, you're looking at the same things over and over day after day, doing the same task over and over day after day. And your day is broken up into periods that are always the same, same time for break, for lunch, etc. So definitely that would be, for me at least, the most boring job. I mean, I'm not saying the others are more exciting than this one, but at least not as boring as an assembly line worker. So that is about the most boring job. What do you think is the most tiring out of these jobs? A doctor, a farmer, a miner, or a top model? Well, I would say a top model. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I'm not saying, of course, that their job is not tiring. No, but, you know, being in the spotlight, I know sometimes they have to spend a lot of time uh, in photo shoots and stuff. I wouldn't say that I know that firsthand because I don't. Obviously, if you look at me, you will definitely know that I can never be a top model. But I would say that people who choose to be top models kind of enjoy this kind of thing. Um, They enjoy the attention, the being in the spotlight, having these photo shoots, long photo shoots they have to win. Maybe they kind of enjoy it, right? So I wouldn't say it's, it's tiring for them. Even it can be, of course, any job can be tiring, especially if you're very good at it. And if you're really wanted, you know, everybody wants you, not other people. But I think about it, even this is a difficult question to answer. I would say that they're all tiring, but in different ways, of course. But I think probably being a doctor, because it seems that really your time is never your own if you're in a general practice. And even if you work in hospital, that's even worse. I mean, they work terrible hours in hospital. So that's definitely the most tiring job. I will ask you this question. What do you think is the most useful job? A journalist, a market researcher, a nurse, or a postman or woman? Well, of course, all jobs are very useful. And we have those kind of answers that, yeah, all are good. But I guess a nurse is the most important job of all. A journalist, I will have to say, I'm kind of in between, between a journalist and a nurse. But to be honest, you know, with the level of journalism that we have these days and with all those false things and, you know, when they, especially when they, not all of them, of course, some of them are very honorable, but, you know, when they start lying and then, you know, they start attacking each other in a very unprofessional way, I would definitely say a nurse. It's still a very respectful job. It's still a very necessary job. A society may be able to live without journalists, maybe. I'm not saying it's a good idea. Of course, we need people to dig in and search for the truth, but we can never live without nurses. And this is actually maybe the most useful job. And for all people who've been to hospitals before, you must know what I mean. I mean, the nurse is even more important than a doctor because the doctor is there for a couple of minutes and and it's very important that you are seen by a doctor and the doctor tells you what's wrong with you or how you're getting better or not. But the person who takes care of you 24-7 is the nurse. And when you have a good nurse, whether it's a male nurse or a female nurse, 
I mean, your stay at the hospital gets a lot easier, even when you are in pain, even when you are in, in the worst situation possible. You're weak, you're fragile. This person is the real person that can comfort you and that can make your stay or make this phase of your life a lot easier. So I would say definitely the most useful job is the nurse, especially now with the coronavirus and all this craziness. Of course, it is the most useful job ever. But in general, I mean, apart from coronavirus and this COVID crisis, I would say definitely a nurse anytime. If you would ask me this question, a nurse is the most useful job. So my question to you, and that is the worst. Let's talk about the worst job. And we're not saying that the worst job, that these are bad jobs or whatever, but the worst job to do. Which do you think is the worst job? A grave digger, a prison warden, a soldier, or a toilet cleaner? Well... That's difficult. I mean, the worst job. It depends, again, if you like the job, if you don't like it, whatever. I mean, some people, for some reasons that are kind of beyond me, they like to be prison wardens. I don't know why, but they have their reasons. I, I would never even think about it, but some people just enjoy it. Maybe they enjoy the power or something, but that's definitely not the worst. I mean, the worst is, I guess, a soldier, being a soldier. For two main reasons. First of all, of course, if you're a soldier, you might end up having to kill someone, and that's a terrible, terrible thing to do. Yeah, I understand that you're killing someone for the right reason, but you're still killing someone, and this is going to haunt you. I mean, we can see that soldiers, when they come back from wars, they are haunted by all the ghosts, I mean, not ghosts, I mean, but by all these memories of those people whom they killed, even the bad ones. I mean, they're still people, right? It's not easy to kill people you might end up having to kill people. It's not always stand and guard and stuff like that. No, you have to kill people sometimes. And, you know, just to think about it in a different way, and that's just like a little bit away from the drama, a soldier is the worst because a soldier needs to be a grave digger at times, a prison warden at times, and a toilet cleaner. So, you know, being a soldier is like doing everything else. So it's definitely the worst job ever. And, of course, it's very dangerous. That's why. But all our love and respect goes to those soldiers who do their job and they sacrifice their lives sometimes to protect other innocent people or other civilians. So I'm definitely not belittling them at all. All right. So that was the second topic we want to talk about in this episode and in our discussion. Let me remind you that this is a discussions episode from English Plus Podcast. So you might think to yourselves, how can I use this? Well, I know it's difficult to think about it this way, but you can consider this episode to be interactive. You might pause the episode when it comes to some questions. You might try to answer these questions and then listen to our answers, to the sample answers, Ben and I. And you might think to yourself, it's not about being right or being wrong. There's no good answer. There's no bad answer. And forget about the grammatical mistakes that you might make. That's not necessary. That's not important at this moment. You can think about these later. Think about the questions, the ideas, what do you want to talk about? And if you pause at some questions and if you try to answer the questions yourselves, uh, that will help you think about the language and think about speaking, and that will make speaking a lot easier. So if you want to practice this way, of course, you're more than welcome to consider practicing your English with this discussions episode from English Plus Podcast. And before we continue, let me remind you that you can find a lot of activities, uh, interactive activities, PDF downloadable worksheets to show notes on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. The link is in the description of the episode. There is a custom post for every single episode we create. We add different activities to different episodes based on the episode type, but you will always find something that will take your English to the next level. So take the link and take your English with it to the next level. And there is also the link that will take you to our Patreon page. If you like the content we're creating and you would like to support us to create more of this content and reach more people, become our patron on Patreon and help us grow, reach more people and create more content. Now, with that being said, let me move back and talk about dirty jobs. Now, the question is, which of these organizations would you work for if you had little or no alternative? So I will start with them one by one. And Ben, you would tell me if you would consider working for any one of these companies if you really had no alternative. What about a pharmaceutical company which tests its beauty products on animals? Would you work for them if you had to? Well, I will have to be honest with you. I might work for them even if I don't have to. 
I'm not saying that I don't care if they test their products on animals, but since it's legal, I guess, there's not much that I can change. And I know that a lot of people are not going to like my answer, but to be honest, uh, yeah, I don't think I have a problem with that. I would work for them if I had to, even if I don't have to. That's honest. Thank you for your honesty. What about a multinational which trades with the governments of politically oppressed people? I would love to say no for this question, but it's kind of impossible. I mean, we have international companies that work with all countries all around the world. And if you really want to search for companies that never do business with those countries where people are oppressed, you might not find any companies. So let's be real. I mean, I'm definitely not a fan of countries where people are oppressed, but what can you do? I mean, especially where you remember, we're talking, we're not in a place of power. We don't have political power or we cannot put pressure on any of these rulers who are oppressing their own people. We can do nothing about it. So when it comes to working for companies that do business with these rulers or these countries, we can't help it. I mean, there are a lot of countries around the world where people are oppressed. And companies have to do business with everybody. So it's kind of difficult to say no to that. I would love to say no, but to be honest, no, I would work for a multinational which trades with the governments of politically oppressed people. All right. So you don't say no too much, right? No, I mean, just I'm trying to be realistic here. That's all. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, what about an arms producer or a company whose products can be used for military purposes? Well, that's a tough question, but I mean, if you think about military, I would love again to say no to that. But if you think about it, it's not just about the arms. The arms are necessary, but it depends who you're selling your arms to. And here we can go into some theories or conspiracy theories and talk about, you know, just like those companies who are ruling the world or whatever. But after all, you know, Yeah, maybe they're selling arms, but even those who sell vehicles, you know, to people and these vehicles are used by rebels somewhere and they mount arms on them and they use them. So what do you think about automobiles? You know, just like they even use those for car bombs. I'm not saying that this is okay. It's definitely not okay. I'm definitely not with the idea of creating more weapons. We don't need more weapons. We need more peace around the world. But we have to be realistic, right? I mean, if the company produces products that can be used for military purposes, I mean, a lot of things can be used for military purposes. You're talking about computers, you're talking about programs, you're talking about not only weapons, a lot of things. That will be very difficult. I mean, if you say no to all of these things, you would not do anything. It's very difficult because these are the things that drive the money. And, you, and that's why you see most of the progress comes from things that can be used by the military. Or for military purposes. So, as I said, you don't say no too much, right? <sighs> Just honest. Okay. So, what about this one? Let's see if you're going to say no to this one. A fast food chain that opens restaurants in beautiful squares in the old quarters of towns. I mean, um, yeah, I would, I would say no to that. No, but I would, I'd be lying, man. Why, why would I say no to that? I mean... Yeah, I, I hate seeing those squares, you know, be filled with those new restaurants or new, you know, just uh, fast food chains and stuff. I would love to see them in their original glamour and beauty, but it's business. People sell. It's not my land. The government has to do something, you know. They should ban the sale of some shops or, or even uh, lands there and just to preserve the beauty of the place. But I can't do anything about it. So, no, I would... I would say no, but not really. No, no, I would, I would work for fast food. But I wouldn't work for a fast food chain because I hate working for fast food chains, not because of this reason. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Looking to enhance your English skills while exploring a world of knowledge? Then English Plus Podcast website is just for you. Dive into diverse topics ranging from science to literature, history to business, and myths to modern insights. Each episode from our podcast or article from our magazine is a journey of learning and discovery, designed to not only improve your language skills, but also broaden your understanding of the world. Join us at English Plus Podcast, where language meets limitless learning. Tune in today and take your English to the next level. Visit EnglishPlusPodcast.com to start your journey. English Plus Podcast, 
language, learning, enlightenment. Never stop learning with English Plus. All right. So, what about a nuclear power station? Why would I say no to that? I mean, it's clean energy, especially if it is not being used for creating nuclear weapons or stuff. If it is just being used for creating clean nuclear energy, why not? I mean, that's better than the other types of power stations. It doesn't pollute the air. It's better. No, I definitely say yes to that. I would love to work in a nuclear power station. Okay, yes, man. You say yes to everything. You've said yes to all of the jobs I told you about. Oh, um, but not all of them are really dirty, you know? Okay, I understand. But what about a tobacco company? Would you work in a tobacco company? Okay, I mean, to be idealistic, I would have to say definitely no. Because the tobacco company is kind of killing the people. It's bad. But to be honest, I kind of smoke, so... It would be kind of hypocritical to say that I wouldn't work for tobacco companies because they're ruining. I, I understand. I'm, I'm saying smoking is bad. I'm not saying smoking is good. Even if I do smoke, I know that smoking is bad. And I hope that I can quit smoking someday. And the sooner the better. But answering your question, I can't say no to that. I can't say, no, I wouldn't work for them because they produce cigarettes. Well, I consume cigarettes. So I can't say that I'm morally against that. I can be morally against that when I quit smoking. Okay, I, I hope you quit smoking soon. So I would say that you wouldn't even consider any of these jobs dirty jobs. No, no, it's not about being a dirty job. They're not dirty jobs. What you do in the job can be dirty, even if you work for a company that takes care of children with cancer. I mean, if you are dirty inside, you can be dirty in any organization you are. It is not related to the job. You may be in a place and you may bring your morals and principles and make the place better or vice versa. You may have bad morals. You may be unscrupulous and you go work in a place where all the people are very good and, you know, just like the company itself is very good and you might corrupt it. It comes from us. It doesn't come from the type of job. That's what I think, at least. Okay. So let's wrap it up for today's episode and talk about how wrong these things are. Let's talk about the first thing. What about if you canceled information on a computer in the company you work for and you don't report that this thing happened? I understand why a person would do that, but that's definitely wrong. Because sometimes these problems can be solved if you report them and the sooner the better, because sometimes they can retrieve some of the information before it's too late. But if you don't talk about it and you just uh, leave it until people realize what you've done, especially you, you said that accidentally, it's not on purpose, right? Yeah, sure. It's accidentally. But the wrong thing is not to report it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You have to report it. And especially when there are accidental mistakes, all you have to do is to report them. Accept any kind of punishment that comes from your lack of focus or whatever other problem you might be having at the time. But definitely don't be that person who is labeled as a liar and a cheater. You know, that's really bad. And that sticks that sticks in the minds of your superiors and the owners of the company. They will never trust you again if they don't fire you in the first place. Yeah, I agree. So what about this one? A woman goes to a job interview. She's two months pregnant, but she doesn't say anything about that to the employers. That's kind of tricky because what if she gets the job and she gets pregnant after she gets the job? What difference would it make to be pregnant at the beginning of your employment or just shortly after you're employed? But here, you know, I mean, to talk about it from the other side as well, uh, you need to tell them. You need to tell them, especially if that is an important thing. And it is kind of important because, you know, at the beginning of your job, you need to work continuously for a certain time just to understand how things work. So you can't just start working for about six months and, you know, then you have to take your maternity leave. The wrong thing would be if you don't say that on purpose. You know that this is a thing that is expected or they expect to know about this and then you hide it. That is wrong. But if it is not required, so it's a normal thing. But yeah, it's better to be clear from the beginning, you know, just tell them what they need to know. Okay, so what about phoning up to say you're sick when you're not, just to get a day or days off? Well, I would definitely say it's wrong, but I've done it, you've done it, everybody I know has done it once or twice at least. 
a lot of people do that and it's kind of sad because I remember I did it only when I had jobs I didn't like that much. So it's not just to cheat the company. I mean, very few people do that just to cheat the company, so to speak. But a lot of people do it just because they hate their jobs or they don't enjoy their jobs or they're not motivated. So when you find that people are motivated to do what they do, they never do that. I and mean, that happens when there is no motivation. So is it wrong? Yeah, sure. But is it understandable? Of course it is understandable. And I wouldn't say that it is a big mistake. I mean, you know, after all, yes, you lied. But, you know, sometimes you're not sick, but you're really not in the mood going to the office. And if you go to the office, you wouldn't be doing anything. So you'd better stay at home. I wouldn't say that's too much. It's a mistake, but it's not that big of a mistake, in my opinion. All right. So what about making personal photocopies on the company's photocopier? Well, this is definitely wrong because these things are meant to be used for work purposes only and not for personal purposes, unless your company is okay with it. I mean, if your company is okay with this thing and they already mentioned it, that if you need to make copies, and I kind of doubt that anybody would say that, but if your company is okay with it, then of course it's not a mistake. But in general, yes, it is a mistake. I mean, you might photocopy a page or two. That's fine. You might not even need to ask permission for that. It's not that big of a deal. But if you want to photocopy a book, hundreds and hundreds of pages, well, of course, that's kind of like stealing from the company, right? So at least you have to get permission. You have to ask them if it is okay or not. They might say it's okay. And maybe most of the time, if they like you, they will tell you no problem. Just go ahead and photocopy. And they're not going to take any money from you. But just tell them. I mean, don't get caught doing that. Because it's really bad. I mean, it's just like, why would you want to smear your image for something as silly as this? I mean, just photocopying something. It's the big deal, man. I mean, just go pay for that thing and don't put yourself in that situation. Yeah, I understand what you mean. But anyway, let's go to our next question. What about lying about your qualifications at a job interview? That is terrible. That's not just a mistake. That's terrible. Because that would backfire. That would come back to bite you later when they start to ask you to do the things you said you were able to do. I mean, what if you said that you could speak a language that you don't speak or you could do something that you can't do? And then they would need somebody who can do this and they ask for you because they know, oh, yeah, I remember Danny knew how to do that. Danny spoke this language, etc. And then it turns out to be that you just lied about this in your job interview. That would be terrible, man. Don't put yourself in that position ever. Just be honest about your qualifications. And if they like you, fine. If they don't like you, no problem. There are a lot of companies. There are a lot of other companies who would like the set of qualifications you have. If this company doesn't like it, there are other companies that would like it. They will appreciate you for what you know. But this will definitely get you into trouble. Okay. What about drinking a lot of alcohol during the work break? I have a problem with drinking alcohol in the work break. Not a lot. I mean, drinking alcohol during breaks, that's wrong. I'm even against drinking a lot of alcohol during the weekdays. I mean, you have work the next day. You don't want to go there and you're not totally focused. You have an obligation to be focused at all times. But definitely, work breaks. I mean, you just have to go back to work. Definitely not. That's a big mistake. That's wrong. That's a definite no. Okay, what about stealing office supplies then? Pens and paper. Oh, <laughs> what do you expect me to say? Yeah, it's okay. No problem. I, was, I just talked about the photocopying that, you know, just if you want to photocopy more than a page or two, you should ask for permission. And what do you expect me to say that this is okay? No, of course, this is a big deal. This is wrong. This is stealing. It doesn't matter if it's a pen or if it's money. It's the same. It's stealing. Well, I wish all people were as firm as you are about this matter, because some people find it okay to even take money from their companies. Anyway, let's wrap it up. But before we do that, uh, tell me about a couple of things that you really find is wrong. You know, I mean, we, we talked about those few things, but do you think about other things that are really wrong? They're really bad things to do when you work in companies. Yeah, I mean, of course, there are a lot of things that are wrong that you wouldn't want to do when you work in a company. But I can think of like cheating on expenses an expense account so you can take extra money from purchases or other things. Some people say that this is being clever, but I would say that this is stealing, period. And definitely one of the wrong things is selling company secrets. That is very serious. All right. So that would be all for 
today, I mean, we talked a lot about jobs. We talked about dirty jobs. We talked about how wrong things are, honesty at work and other stuff. We compared some jobs. We talked about which were the easiest, the most tiring, etc. So I hope that could stir some ideas in your mind to discuss, to think about, and to discuss with your friends. And the key thing is that you discuss those things in English so that you can practice your English. You have the ideas now. You can discuss these things. You can practice discussing these things. You can take some of the ideas we talked about in this episode. You can use some of those phrases, sentences, or ideas and use them in your own speaking. And of course, you can come up with your own ideas because it's discussion, so we can't just cover everything. All right? So with that being said, let me remind you again that you can find a lot of extra activities and extra materials that you can use on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Take the link and take your English with it to the next level. This is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.